Today we're going to cover 10 steps for traverse computations. Traverse is a method used in order to convert angles and distances into coordinates. When we're referring surveying to plane coordinates, we're referring to northing and easting as the distance to a point measured from the origin to the point in either a northerly direction or an easterly direction. We also have to include the angle referred to as the azimuth, and this angle is measured from the north in a clockwise direction. So if we have two points, like are shown there, with coordinates northern and easting 1, and a point 2 with coordinates northern and easting 2, the term course refers to the section of line joining 1 and 2. And the azimuth, as shown in there, uh, in the right hand side, is the angle measured from the north in a clockwise direction to the course. So, uh, in addition to azimuth, we need to work with the um, departure and latitude. Latitude and departures are the projection of the distance D1 to the distance from point 1 to 2, so that's the distance of course 1 2, and if we project it in a northerly direction, uh, that would be our latitude. If we project it in an easterly direction, that would be the departure. But another way to uh, think of latitude would be the change in northern and departure would be the change in easting as we go from 1 to 2 northern 2 to northern 1 that difference would be the latitude and easting 2 minus easting 1 would be the departure in other words the change in easting now, to calculate that, it's simple trigonometry. We look at the distance d12 as the hypotenuse, and now that we have an azimuth, we're going to apply the cosine to get the adjacent. The adjacent is the latitude in this case. So latitude is equal d12 times the cosine of azimuth. Departure would be the, op the opposite side. So we're going to be using the sine of the azimuth times the distance. That will give us our departure. As we move to a, a third point now, we're going to have to make use of a uh, back azimuth. This is an angle that basically takes the previous azimuth, is shown in here, uh, as we look at these two angles, they are the same, uh, because they are opposite angles. So. In this diagram, we can see the azimuth 1, 2. And now, if we have 180 added to that angle, we come up with the back azimuth. 180 would be in degrees. If we're working in um, radians, we're talking about adding pi. So, as we go to a third point, and now that we have a back azimuth, we can calculate the new azimuth for section 2, 3 because we have measured the interior angle at point 2 and that's the angle that we're just showing in red in there. To avoid confusion we call it alpha 2 and in that case it's pretty obvious that the azimuth of 2, 3, the angle measure from the north to the course 2, 3 is equal to the green angle minus the red angle. In other words, azimuth of 2, 3 is equal to the back azimuth of the previous section minus the interior angle. Now that we have the new uh, azimuth as 2, 3, we can calculate a new latitude and a new departure and those are going to be taking the distance 2, 3 and projected in northerly direction and easterly directions. So now that we have the latitude and departures, 
we will be able to compute the next coordinates. So we have to continue this sequence, repeating the previous steps 3, 4, and 5, until we arrive back to the initial point, and that will make a closed traverse. Now that we have completed uh, the loop, going back to the initial point number one, we take a look at our uh, latitudes and departures, and if we add them all together, um, they should add up to zero, because we started from the same point that we finished. In reality, there's a small error involved, and that summation of latitudes will give us the misclosure. Likewise, in the summation of departures, will give us the departures misclosure, and the linear misclosure will be the square root of the squares added, so that we can define the term um, precision ratio as the linear misclosure over the total length of the traverse, and the accuracy is the inverse of that. So it would be a ratio. A ratio of 1 to 1,000 means that for every 1,000 units of length, we're making one unit of error. So typical uh, specifications are different if it is a construction level survey as opposed to a legal property transfer. Uh, that becomes a lot more um, accurate, the uh, specification. For construction level, it's usually three to 5,000 the ratio, whereas a property transfer will require a ratio in the order of uh, 1 to 15,000. If our uh, measurements fall within acceptable range, now what we do is we adjust the uh, measurements proportionally to the length of each section that we measure. So in other words, we're going to apply the correction, a latitude correction, as the total latitude misclosure divided by the total length and multiplied by each course distance. If the courses were all exactly the same length, we divide it by the number of sides, but here is a way to make it proportional to the distance. So uh, likewise, we do the same thing in the um, departure correction to distribute the departure misclosure for each of the sections. And then we compute a corrected latitude by subtracting the correction from the original latitude. So that this time, once we have the corrected values, they are actually going to end up adding to zero. The sum of the corrected latitude as well as the sum of the corrected departure will add up to zero this time. Once we have the corrected departures and latitudes, we will proceed point by point as um, getting the northing from the previous northing plus the corrected latitude and the easting as a previous easting plus a corrected departure. So those are the 10 steps required to complete a calculation of Travers.